Hello world, good to see you again. It's been a long time no see. I've been off the uh, off the videos for a little while here, but we're back again. Uh, actually changed the location at the Purdue University uh, Ham Shack here, W9YB. Uh, being a member of the Pivglitz, I am also a member of W9YB as I'm a student here at Purdue. Uh, we're not going to be using any of Purdue's radios. We're going to be using my true SDX, but we are going to be hooked up to a 20 meter dipole here on the top of the Purdue Memorial Union. Uh, we're going to be using that to uh, give us something to uh, transmit into that's not a dummy load so we can give you guys a good demonstration of the app, uh, the Android app FT8. Charlie November FT8CN. Uh, it's currently in development, but you can find the development build on GitHub, uh, link in the description below, and uh, we'll be demonstrating that here. Uh, so the setup um, for my portable FT8 slash POTA setup here, um, I've been using it for FT8 because it's been fun on the go here with this FT8CN app. Um, we've got a uh, USB-C battery bank uh, hooked up to in this little box here is uh, one of those PD triggers, USB power delivery triggers. I also added a cap and an inductor as a low pass filter, try to get some of that switching harmonics out of the radio, out of the DC line there, uh, just to try to make sure that uh, any of the uh, switching from the switching power supply in the battery bank doesn't end up in the radio since uh, this is a kit build and um, I didn't necessarily know how well the DC filtering is. So just trying to give it a little extra help here. Um, and then other than that, I got it hooked up into a little Anderson power pole to the uh, barrel jack connector with a little ferrite just to kind of clamp down on any common mode noise you might see. Then um, we got an antenna jack on the side um, and the two cables, the two connectors I should say with one cable, uh, lovely provided by a um, digi rig, uh, same as the actual digi rig that we'll be using over here. Just a uh, standard digi rig, no modifications. I believe it's the 1.9 version, the latest version as of uh, 2023. Uh, we won't be using these today, but I just thought I'd share them because I haven't shown this setup before. Got a little bitty uh, uh, headphone, uh, just standard headphones, but they're on this little retractable cable. Uh, just makes them nice for storage. They're not particularly great or anything, but neither is the Audio for the True SDX. Um, it is a great radio, but uh, audio is not its strong suit, but it does get you by. And for the point of POTA, it is more than sufficient. And they got this adorable little um, hand microphone uh, from K6ARK. Uh, bought the little kit there and assembled it. Beautiful little thing. Uh, just a little electric microphone in a case with a little uh, momentary push button. Um, and then he's got build instructions for wiring up for the configuration used by the True SDX. And then Last we have the True SDX itself. Uh, there's nothing really different about this one other than the standard. I just made sure it's tuned, it's on frequency, um, and just for the fun of it, I got a different knob that I had lying around because I like the tactile feel of that. Uh, so the only thing missing from this setup is the phone that's recording this right now, and we will be getting to that momentarily. I'm gonna have to switch to uh, screen recording and we'll get on to it. See you then. So we've got the DigiRig plugged into uh, the phone now, and you can see it pops up a notification of choosing what app you want to use with the new DigiRig USB device. Um, I already have WinLink, uh, and I have um, APRS Droid installed, so it gives me the option of those. But what we want today is FT8 Charlie November, so we're going to select that. And now it is opening. This is version 0.86, the latest as of March 15th, 2023. Uh, and you can see it automatically starts up. I'm here in portrait mode on the phone. And I can select this serial port here, which is the DigiRig. And you can see it says rig connection succeeded. And we are now on 20 meters. And look, it's already started uh, decoding FT8. So it's working right out of the gate. Um, but we're going to go through some of the settings here first to kind of show off how to set up your rig. Um, I've done this a few times, uh, but I am no means an expert, and this is just how I've been doing it successfully in a couple POTA activations. Um, so we're gonna scroll through the settings here. You can see the call sign, uh, CQ modifier, um, uh, modifies your CQ message in uh, FT8. So like it is there, it's calling CQ POTA. If I call CQ, uh, that's standard like WSJTX. 
Uh, you just have a little less flexibility in the messages you can send. Um, your grid square, uh, it can automatically determine your grid square if you're on the move using your GPS. Um, and um, your audio frequency uh, is where your TX and RX is going to be um, transmitting and receiving, um, just like WSJTX. Uh, you can change it here, or as we'll show you later, you can slide around using the visual waterfall and change your transmit frequency. So it's uh, just as flexible as the um, spectrum waterfall in WSJTX. Uh, TX delay um, uh, is 500 milliseconds um, for showing um, when you want to transmit. Um, it will delay the actual audio um, after it's keyed the radio, give the time, give the radio time to get going um, and transmitting. Um, time offset, push to talk delay um, are likewise the same kind of offsets um, for making sure your transmit is engaged on the radio before um, you actually transmit, transmit any of the audio. Um, and then your frequency, uh, you can select it there. I believe there's another spot in the app you can select it, but you can um, move between the different FT8 bands, um, different frequencies for each band. Um, uh, your control method, um, you can select between Vox, CAT, RTS, and DTR. So Vox is um, just Vox activated, so if you start transmitting audio and you have your transmitter on Vox, it'll automatically transmit. Um, CAT control is uh, serial control of the radio. Um, you, we are able to do that as we selected the serial port with the Digi rig. Um, however, the true SDX I'm using right now, um, the CAT control is over USB, and I don't have a way to connect two USB devices to one phone. Um, and uh, so I have the RTS push, uh, push a talk method. So um, the RTS line of the serial port is being pulled down whenever. Um, whenever we want to transmit, and that will uh, key the push to talk on the True SDX. So it is hardware keying, um, and we don't have Vox enabled. Um, DTR is a different method for doing the same thing, just using a different pin of the serial control. Um, and then you can select your CIV and baud rate if you're using a transmitter that you want to cat control. Um, and uh, you can change some various modifiers of how you want um, the FTHCN app to respond if people miss, uh, if you miss a response, uh, it'll automatically transmit again for X number of times. Um, and there are some uh, logging preferences uh, as well as clearing cache. Um, as you can see in the right hand side, there's a little eye icon um, for each menu icon, and this uh, will let you know um, more information about every different, um, more information about every different setting. Uh, you can see here, uh, I click on it and um, it will show you more information about each of the um, settings that you're able to change. So it's uh, not a, there's a decent manual that's been translated to English and um, quite frankly, these uh, information buttons um, do more than enough to let you know how the app works and all these different features. So pretty well documented um, for a in progress app. Um, so we're going to move on here now to the um, decoding window and we'll kind of go down the list here um, now that we have things set up. So we're here in the decode window of FT8CN, operates like the left hand side of WSJTX where you see all the stations you can actually decode including the CQ messages. Um, the left hand side is the waterfall which shows um, actually something unique where um, the actual stations uh, that you can decode are displayed on the waterfall where they are in the audio spectrum. So that's kind of unique. And then you can actually slide uh, your finger across the, the spectrum to change where your TX frequency is, uh, which is actually kind of handy um, for adjusting your TX. Um, you can clear the messages with the trash can icon um, and the microphone blinking icon in the top right indicates that you're actively listening uh, through the digirig to the radio. Uh, moving on to the calling window, this is uh, like the right-hand window of WSJTX. It aggregates all the um, CQs, actually, um, that you can decode into one window, so it kind of eliminates the excess number of messages um, in the uh, decode window, and this, were, this is where you would actually respond um, to stations calling CQ by, uh, you can swipe left on them, you can see that microphone uh, icon, the loudspeaker there, that indicates that you want to um, transmit to them, and you can swipe uh, right on them to delete that uh, message if you want to clear it without actually clearing the whole window. 
Um, you can see in the bottom right hand corner, there's a CQ button and that'll actually, um, that'll actually enable, uh, show your CQ message um, and prepare it. And then if you click the microphone icon or the uh, loudspeaker icon on top right and see it's now highlighted, this means we will now be transmitting on the next FT8 cycle. So the uh, radio has now been keyed and we can see we're transmitting um, and I just disabled it. Uh, there. Uh, so we'll be transmitting and we can call CQ there or respond to uh, actual stations. Um, the spectrum window is just a full screen window of the spectrum. Um, if you were in uh, not uh, landscape mode, uh, this was how you'd be able to access the spectrum. Uh, but since I have the phone flipped sideways in the portrait, you can do a split screen. Um, so you can kind of just choose that based on your preference. Um, and uh, other than that, we can move to the globe icon. Um, which if the screen wants to format, um, allows you to see kind of a, almost a, a grid tracker-esque uh, view uh, where you can actually see uh, all the live stations you're decoding, um, the direction of the transmit and receive to different locations, um, as well as any other active um, uh, CQ messages, um, which you can see up top, uh, there, were, there are indicators showing where people are calling CQ from. Um, which are the flags and then the QSX, QSO, and QSL, depending on um, stations you're hearing, stations you've talked to, and stations you've confirmed with. Um, I don't have any uh, active logs. I've cleared the logs in this app, so there's no QSO or QSL on here, uh, but they would be shown as respective um, yellow and red boxes, uh, just like the blue ones being displayed here. So this is kind of neat to be able to see uh, where stations are and uh, where stations are trying to transmit to. Uh, just gives a nice bit of visual flair um, to the app. And you can see um, it's every time uh, it's showing how many decodes it's uh, making. Um, and then you can also, with the bars icon, select um, different frequencies um, that you would want to transmit on, depending on the band of your choice. Um, and other than that, um, you can hit the settings icon to uh, view some tips and uh, um, hide or view them based on what information you want to view. Um, and then all you have to do is hit the um, left hand icon there and it'll actually show um, a split screen of the decodes along with the uh, visual map view. Uh, so this kind of gives you another version of the split screen. And you just hit the back button and then you're back to the um, your back to the uh, spectrum waterfall or in whatever um, whatever window you were at last. So this is pretty much the main part of the app and we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up here. So just to wrap up here, um, I definitely think the app's uh, a real winner. It's still in development, it's got some rough edges um, on the user interface, but all in all it really is pretty intuitive to use. I do like the swipe left, swipe right, as well as the um, world view of uh, like grid tracker where it shows you where the actual grid squares, the stations you're decoding are coming from. That's really handy if you want to be able to, if you're out at a POTA or a SOTA and you want to try to explain what you're doing to someone uh, passing by. It really gives you a good visual way to describe, hey, I'm not just clicking buttons on my phone, I'm actually listening to the world, talking to the world and uh, doing this activation. It gives you a good visual way to describe what you're doing there. So all in all, I think it's a really um, successful app. I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. And um, I myself have used it in a couple pod activations and have really enjoyed the experience. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see where the app goes. So that's all for now, but thanks everyone for, uh, for watching the video here. I hope it was helpful and informative and hope to hear you on the air. 73s.